Hello friends, welcome back to Huawei Ace. Welcome to the discussion of the mains test series. And this is test 4. And this is part 2 of the mains test. Where we are going to discuss from question number 6 to question number 10. In the part 1, we have discussed from question number 1 to question number 5. So in this initiative, as you all know, we are discussing Vision IIS prelims and mains test series completely at free of cost on our YouTube channel. Do share with your friends and do leave in the comments if you have any suggestions for us or if you need anything else. So let's quickly begin with the sixth question. So in this test, as you all have seen, the economy static questions are being covered. So let's quickly start. Sixth question is about the inflation. So recently, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, the inflation was in use. And every year we will be seeing a couple of static questions in the question paper. So it's always better for us to have a grip over the static content, like how to write the answer, what to have, a, what to write for the introduction, so like that. So the static content, if we can add some current affairs to these kind of questions, so this will give us that edge, right? So if you see this question, this is on the inflation directly. So the demand pull inflation and the cost push inflation. So here if you see, uh, the, the question is directly on the static concept. So here the in, in the introduction, you will start with the inflation. So the definition of inflation, so inflation is nothing but the rise of the general rise of prices and fall in the purchasing power of money over time. This is called as inflation. And the factors, if you see, the demand pull inflation and the cost push inflation. So recently, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, there is a great mismatch between the demand and supply. The supply reduced. And because of that, the there is in this increase in prices, especially in the wheat market. We have seen that across the world. But India, because it is surplus or you can say it is self-sufficient in this wheat, rice and all. So we did not have any issues. But if you see the oil market, the oil prices have increased because of the cutoff of this Russian oil in the international market. Though India is lucky to get some oil at concession rate from uh, the Russia directly. But still we are facing these kind of issues across the globe. So the demand pull inflation, if you see, when the aggregate demand in the economy becomes more than supply demand is more than supply and the reasons for this demand pull inflation the first one is increase in the government expenditure so when the when there is increase in the government expenditure what does that show that show that people are getting more money people are getting more money either because of any direct scheme or indirectly because of the investments which are being done by the government so whatever it is the people will be getting more money into their hands that means they will have more money to purchase the goods so when they will have more money to purchase the goods that means the demand for the goods increases and there will be less supply so because of this mismatch there will be rise in the prices next rise in purchasing power of people so this will happen due to the higher disposable income of the people so higher disposable income if people are having what does that show that show that people are getting more salaries for example, the 7th pay commission implementation or uh, the general rise of the salaries. So all these things. Next one, increase in the consumption. Example, the increase in the protein rich diet consumption after the COVID. For example, eggs, pulses, fish, etc. This will also lead to rise in the demand. Next, the rise in demand due to rising population. So this, this happens generally in a gradual manner. But this is a major, this is also a major reason. Next, the demand pull and next also because of the, uh, because of this black marketing, especially we will see these things with regarding to the essential goods. So essential goods, what are the essential goods? So for example, tomato, onion, with these kind of things, we will be seeing this black marketing. So what the suppliers will do is they will artificially increase the demand. So when the artificial, de when the artificially increase this demand, then they can sell their goods at higher price. So this also sometimes lead to this. So next, after the demand pull, we have the cost push inflation. The cost push means the increase in the uh, cost of the raw materials of the goods. So increase in the cost of raw materials can happen due to various reasons. So because of the increase in salaries or because of the uh, less supply of the raw materials like that. So the cost push inflation is when the aggregate supply of goods and services they uh, decreases because of the increase in production cost. So when the aggregate supply, when the aggregate supply, just a second, right? Sorry, yeah. So when the aggregate supply either reduces or the aggregate supply cost increases. So because of these reasons, what are the reasons? First is infrastructure bottleneck. So because of the less infrastructure, the supply cost increases the taxation, the monsoon, 
because if you see agricultural products they are dependent on monsoon so if there is improper monsoon that also will lead to this when the high taxation or uh, the high taxation in fact what it will do is it will lead to increase in the prices at the uh, at the uh, raw material stage itself also the increase in the administrative prices or you can even add to this the international reasons because these days we are seeing uh, uh, the rise in the prices because of the lack of supply from the international market for example if you see during the covid we have seen the shortage of these uh, shortage of these electronic uh, electronic items like the motherboards the chips and all so that is also an issue right so that we can see so this inflation in general is controlled by the monetary policy of the reserve bank for that we have this monetary policy committee so this also this we have to write in the conclusion so like this we can write a good answer so next question the seventh question is on the economic reforms of 1991 so this 1991 is a landmark landmark event for india the liberalization privatization globalization the lpg reform started so why they started initially is the because of the balance of payment crisis so we can start our answer from that the balance of payment crisis of the 1991 has led or has made india into a more global or has uh, in fact ensured that india opens itself to the global markets so because also there was this rising inflation back then so this reforms in the market of india is called as the liberalization privatization and globalization where india market started to integrate with the world markets and the and the uh, basic relaxation started in the market all these things we can write so the comprehensive structural overhaul of indian economy started so what what are these things first is liberalization so in liberalization the delicensing is the first thing that means the licenses which are required for the businesses has reduced next relaxation under the monopolistic and restrictive trade practices that means the government is to totally control the trade what to produce how much to produce where to produce so these relaxations were given right and uh, under the regulation the sebi a new company could be floated with the issuance of shares and debentures without gov- government permission so this is next thing that happened next flexible market exchange rate so back th- originally before 1991 what used to happen is that the exchange rate what we ha- what we had so this was controlled by the government so artificially it was controlled but later on after the 1991 economic reforms the government left this exchange rate to the market so market is determining the exchange rate right so this is the thing next removal of restrictions on the trades and on also on the mergers takeovers and uh, and various uh, establishments of the companies privatization of the psus also started next is globalization this globalization means india integrating integrating with the other global companies and countries this also started right and uh, along with this a lot of businesses start to come to india the bpos the call centers even the it industry started to come to india because of this because the government has uh, done away it has done away with this license raj system because license raj and quota system that where earlier uh, the government used to give fixed number of licenses and they used to even restrict the or the control the uh, production in fact how much to produce is also determined by the government itself so all these things were removed so because of these things india has become a major player today in the global markets the indian it industry has evolved and it is now flourishing so now the time for us is to develop the manufacturing industry also in that manner so that we can reap the benefits of the demographic dividend that we have so all these things we'll write and here one more thing what you can add in these kind of questions is you can also add the issues that are pertaining what are the issues that are there be it the land issues or be it the uh, be it the issues of infrastructure so these things we can also write even because even today if you know uh, that uh, the uh, transportation cost is still very high in india so those things also we can show right so all these things uh, finally we can conclude by saying that uh, ensuring uh, ensuring uh, ease of doing business will make india a global manufacturing hub which will help reap the benefits of the demographic dividend that we have like that we can just conclude right so these are the things next eighth question eighth question is on the capital account convertibility convertibility basically what does it mean is it is nothing but being able to convert foreign currency to domestic currency or 
con being able to convert the domestic currency into foreign currency very easily that is called as convertibility and there are two types of convertibility one is capital account and next is the current account so capital account is nothing but the capital investments that come in that is called as capital account and current account means the general day to day expenses of the people that is called as current account so if you see the capital account convertibility so you, here also you can start with the basic definition the freedom to conduct invest investment transactions without any constraints there are no restrictions on the number of rupees that can be converted into foreign currency that is called as capital account convertibility india allows full convertibility in the current account but only partial convertibility in the capital account the two tarapur committee reports of 1997 and 2006 laid down a path to move towards this full account full capital account convertibility so now you have for this capital account convertibility you have to know the positives as well as negatives so positives if you see it will fuel further liberalization it could bring in more investments it could bring in more specialization because this will lead to uh, more innovations because of the high competition this will lead to increase in the investment choices for the people for example indian investors will be able to invest in foreign securities and so on so forth also it permits the savers and investors to protect real value of their assets all these things we can write as the merits what are the demerits of this capital account convertibility the demerits if you see it will lead to uh, more volatility in the market it will lead to more speculative activity in the market so that will that will have a huge impact on the indian investment uh, sector uh, and also this will weaken the ability of the authorities to tax domestic financial activities income and wealth the market determined exchange rates are higher than officially fixed exchange rates thus the capital account convertibility could raise import prices and could cost the or could or could push the cost this will also lead to currency depreciation and affect the trade and capital flows so all of these things are the negatives so here the tarapur committee has given a road map what is that road map you have to know these three points and they are very important the first is the gross fiscal deficit being less than 3.5% of gdp the gross fiscal deficit next is the inflation rate should be around 3 to 5% for over 3 years the third is the crr cash reserve ratio should be 3% and the gross npa should be less than 5% so these are the preconditions that tarapur committee gave so that we can adopt this full capital account convertibility without this if we adopt to this capital account convertibility then the economy will take a hit this is what the committee said and we have to write these things because these are very basic things and these are the extra things that will give us good marks so we have to write this okay so like this we can write all these points and end the answer next the ninth question the ninth question is on the plan development so plan development if you see the planning system we have adopted from the ussr is a system where for every 5 year we will be having a uh, we will be having this planning commission so the era of plan development commenced with the first 5 year plan of 1951 which is called as the harrod domer model which addressed the problems arising from massive influx of refugees acute food shortages and the mounting inflation so the first 5 year plan we will start from there and after that the second 5 year plan is a great trajectory in the field of planning it was based on the uh dehru mehlonbis model where the heavy industries were given priority so we'll start from that and the contributions so contributions like rapid growth of productive capacity because heavy industries were focused creation of physical and human infrastructure rising rate of investments growth in agriculture was also seen because of the land reforms and development programs enhancement of the scope of public sector industries because back then uh, air india was nationalized in the first five year plan after that lot of banks were also nationalized uh, subsequently all of these things started next import substitution for self reliance next setting up of elaborate system of the de licensing and controls all of these things so like that we can just write these things but we can also in these kind of questions we can also write the negatives but there are certain shortfalls so we did not have a long term perspective so we did not have a long term perspective that impacted the overall uh, development of the industries and the small industries were neglected the small and medium industries were neglected only huge industries were focused all these things we can write the skill development was not carried on that thing also we can write and also if you see uh, various reforms 
which had to be carried on also did not take place so all these things we can write now let's move on to the 10th question which is on the balance of payments so this topic is also very important because one every once in a while both in prelims and mains we will be finding question so balance of payment if you see it is nothing but a balance sheet which records the transactions in goods services and assets between the residents of a country with the rest of the world for a specified time period it helps government to decide on the fiscal and trade policies the fiscal and trade policies there are three components the current account capital account and financial account the current account if you see it record it is a record of trade in goods and services and the transfer payments the current account is in balance when the receipts on the current account equal to the expenditure so that is about the current account and it could be in surplus or deficit depending upon the quantum of receipts and expenditures on the current account it includes various components like trade in goods trade in services so this trade in goods that means the imports and exports so that is called so the difference between imports and exports is nothing but the trade in goods this will have a huge impact on the overall balance of payment because if you see india imports more than it exports we we are a huge importing country we have this uh, trade deficit with countries like russia countries like china and all so that's a huge thing next the trade in services the factor income and non factor income transactions right so these also playing a role so this incomes or uh, this includes the services includes shipping banking insurance tourism software and so on so forth so those are things next is the transfer payments the receipts which the countries which the country gets because of the uh, or you can say uh, the country gets when even when they don't provide any services so that is called as transfer payment for example the remittances uh, the gifts the returns all these things so this is the current account next is capital account in the balance of payment capital account means it records all the international transactions of assets the purchase and sale of assets so this can be the bonds this can be the shares this can be any international companies all these things will be included and it also includes the investments the fdis which come in that means foreign countries investing in india and in indian companies foreign companies and countries investing in india and indian companies and country investing in the foreign uh, nations it includes all of these things fdi fii the foreign portfolio investments all these things the external borrowings also will be under this only the external assistance which india receives from the global banks and all also come under this and along with this the third one is the financial accounts the financial account is the flow of funds from and to foreign countries through various investments in real estate business fdi etc it is monitored through the financial account and it measures the change in foreign ownership of domestic assets and domestic ownership of foreign assets like that so that is the financial account so these three are the basic things and these three strings we will generate so generally this financial account sometimes is included in this capital account only yeah, either you can show it separately or you can show it in the capital account that will be sufficient so like this we can we have to write all the components and examples whenever we are writing so in these kind of questions you also have to write the data or uh, the current account the current account deficit of india currently or uh, where india or the areas in which india is facing huge deficit all of these things we can write or we have to write in fact i'll say because these are the current issues that will give you that extra marks right so these are the questions for the day i'll see you again tomorrow and where we will discuss and there we will discuss from question number 11 to question number 15 right till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind thank you